Hey everyone, welcome back to the Webull tutorial series. In today's video, we'll learn how to trade various different spreads on Webull. We're gonna go step by step on how to place some of the most popular spreads like verticals, iron condors, and butterfly spreads. I'm gonna preface this whole video by saying Webull is not the most conducive platform for creating spreads. It seems like they still have a lot of kinks to work out, but we'll be going through several different examples to make sure you get the hang of it. Now jumping right into it, you can see I'm currently on the stocks page and I've got the option chain pulled up. Now in this case, I'm currently looking at Viacom, but we'll go ahead and switch this to something a little bit more volatile like SoFi. You can see SoFi last traded for $23.29 and we've got the 19 November option chain open right now, which expires in 15 days from now. Now if we scroll down a little bit, let's say we wanted to put on a long vertical call spread. Now in that example, we think SoFi is going up and we want to buy a call while simultaneously selling a further out of the money call. Now this is slightly different than just a single long call option where we have technically unlimited profit potential. If SoFi were to go up to $50 a share or $100 a share or $1,000 a share, we continue to make money on just a long single call option. However, with a long vertical call spread, we max out our profit potential. We define how much money we can make on this trade by creating a spread, which also reduces the risk on the overall trade. Now in this example, let's say we wanted to buy a 24 by $30 call spread, so six points wide. What we're gonna do is come over here to the 24 strike. Keeping in mind the calls are on the left-hand side, we're gonna move our mouse over to the left and see it's currently trading for $1.33 by $1.36. Now in order to create the long vertical call spread, we need to click on the ask of the option we wanna buy. So in this case, we wanna buy the $24 call, so we're gonna go ahead and click on the ask. Now right there, you can see it highlights that option in green saying we're about to buy it. And down below, it tells us in the order entry window, we're about to place a single leg option trade on SoFi. We're buying the $24 strike, 19 November call option. Right now it says we're buying 10 of them. Let's just bump that down to one to simplify things a little bit. And it says currently for that single leg call option, it's gonna cost us $1.36, which if you remember, gotta multiply that by 100. So this trade would cost us $136. But hypothetically, as SoFi goes up, we could make an unlimited amount of money. If it goes up to $30, we can make 600 bucks on this trade. If it went up to 40 bucks, we can make 1600. However, what we're gonna do is create a spread which reduces the amount we have to put up for it, but also puts a cap on our max profit. Now, like I said, we're gonna be selling the $30 call in this example, which puts a cap on this potential trade, which means we won't make any money beyond $30. If SoFi goes up to 40, that's great for everyone else, but for us, we capped it out at 30. Now, it doesn't hurt us if SoFi goes up to 40, but it doesn't help us either. Now in order to create this spread, what we're gonna do is come over here to where it says strategy on the left hand side and it currently says single option. We're gonna go ahead and click on that. And in the menu right here, we're gonna click on vertical. Now what you can see here is we're putting on two trades. We're buying the $24 call while simultaneously selling the $25 call. Now you can see on the right hand side, this reduces the amount we put up for this trade significantly. Before we were putting up 136 bucks, now we're only putting up 34 cents but that's also because we significantly reduced our max profit on this trade. Now the most we could ever make on this trade is the width of the spread, so a dollar wide or $100, minus the 34 cents we had to pay for it. So the most we could make on this trade is 66 cents or $66 if we do just one single spread. Now in our example, I said we wanted to buy the 24 and sell the 30. So what we need to do is come down here to the graph button, and this is the main reason I'm not a fan of doing this on Weeble because of the way we actually have to do this. So what we're gonna do is come over here to where it says width and we're gonna make it six points wide. And there we go, it's six points wide. And we're gonna go back to the table. We're gonna make sure that this looks right. Yep, we're buying the 24, selling the 30. And now we can see we're doing that for a total debit of $1.08 or $108. And now that this spread is six points wide, the most we could make on this trade is $6 or $600 minus the $1.08 we paid for it. So the most we could make is $592. And if you just wanted it to do the math for you, you could come down here towards the bottom, click on these two double arrows right here, and it would tell us our max profit, $492. Now, just like before, you could change some of this stuff. Maybe we only wanted to pay 55 cents for this spread. So we'll go ahead and throw in 55 cents there. And maybe we changed our mind on the expiration. Maybe we want to change this from 19 November to 26 November. But that's about everything that goes into creating a long vertical spread inside of Weeble. Now let's say we want to do this on the short side. So basically selling a credit spread or writing a spread, whatever you want to call it. We're going to go ahead and delete this out of here by right clicking on it and saying delete all. We're then going to say we wanted to sell a vertical put spread and we'll use the same expiration, 19 November. Now in this case, let's say we thought SoFi was going to stay above 20 bucks a share and we wanted to sell a two point wide credit spread. So as you saw there, I found the $20 strike here in the middle 
and I clicked on the bid price for that $20 put because we're selling it. You can see it highlights it in red, and down below in the order entry box, it says we're selling a single option against SoFi. The $20 strike for 19 November expiration, it's on the put side, and we're selling 10 of them currently for a total credit of 42 cents. Again, to simplify this, let's change this from 10 to 1 again. And now you can see if I was to do this, what we're doing is pulling in 42 cents. And all I need to happen for me to keep that entire $42 is for SoFi to stay above 20 bucks for the next 15 days. Now the downside with this trade is that I'm risking two grand on it. Hypothetically, if SoFi were to go against me, and let's say it even went out of business, I could get assigned the stock at 20. SoFi goes to zero, so I lose $20 times 100 shares. My max risk on this trade is $2,000. Now I might not have $2,000 to put up for this trade. Maybe you only have 500 bucks to put up. Now what a spread does is it allows you to hedge this particular trade to reduce the risk. So what we're gonna do is buy a further out of the money option. And in this case, we said we're gonna buy an $18 put. Now to do this, we're gonna do it just like before. We're gonna come over here to where it says single option strategy. When we click on that little drop down arrow, we're gonna come up here and click on vertical once again. We're then going to see here that it flipped things a little bit. We're now selling the 20 and a half and we're buying the 20, which is not what we wanted to do. But before we correct that, let's come down here to the graph. Since we're selling a two point wide vertical spread, we're going to come over here to the width of half a point. We're going to click on the plus sign a few times to get to two. And we're going to go back to the table to make sure we have the right strike selected. Now here we do not have the right strikes. We're going to go ahead and click on this and we're going to find the 18 by 20. Now you can see here I'm selling the 20 while simultaneously buying the 18. And instead of getting that full 42 cents like I was before, I'm now only getting 28 cents in premium. So basically I gave up $14 in order to hedge this trade. Because now my max risk is only if SoFi were to go down to 18. Any lower than that, I'm hedged on this position. Even if SoFi were to go out of business, I've reduced my risk on this trade. The most I could ever lose on it is the width of the spread, which in this case is $2 wide. So the most I could lose on this trade is $200 minus the 28 cents I received. In that case, the most I could lose is 172 bucks on this position. And just like before, if we didn't want to do the math in our heads, we could come down here to the little arrows. And right here, it tells us our max loss is $172 and our max profit is 28 cents or $28, which is the credit that we received. And remember, all we have to have happen is SoFi be above 20 bucks on the date of expiration to keep all of that money. Now that's how you create a short vertical put spread or write a put spread in Webull. The next thing we're gonna go over is how to create an iron condor. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and delete this out of here again. And let's even switch the stock. We'll go to something else. Let's even pull up Tesla just for a second. You can see here Tesla last traded for 1,229 bucks. And if we come down to the option chain for 19 November, just like before, and we can see all of the options listed down here below. Now, if you're not familiar with an iron condor, it's simply selling a vertical put spread and selling a vertical haul spread all at the exact same time. So basically just doing exactly what we just did, just one more time. Now, before we sold just a put spread, which meant we were more neutral to bullish, we either wanted SoFi to stay exactly where it's at or go up a little bit. In this trade with an iron condor, since we're selling both a call spread and a put spread, we don't want Tesla to go anywhere. We hope it stays exactly where it's at. We're much more neutral. Now, in order to create this, we're gonna do it the exact same way as before. We're gonna find one of the options that we wanna put on. So in this case, let's say I wanted to sell the 1180 puts, and we're gonna start with the put side. So we're gonna come over here and we're gonna click on the bid price for that 1180 put. You're gonna see just like before, it comes down here and it throws that, that option contract in here as a single option. We're gonna go ahead and click on that strategy, and we're gonna look through this list and find Iron Condor at the very bottom. Now you can see automatically it throws in some strikes there, which we may or may not want to use. But before we even get to that, let's go ahead and change the quantity again from 10 to one to simplify things a little bit. And you can now see here, if I was to actually do this trade, if I was to sell the 1185 by 1180 put spread while simultaneously selling the 1190 by 1195 call spread, I would pull in $4.98, so 498 bucks. Now, since my spread is five points wide or $500 wide, the most I could lose on this trade is $5, the width of the spread, minus how much I received, 498 bucks. So on this trade, if we come down here, you can see I'm only risking $2 and my max profit is $498. Now the reason for that is because I'm very unlikely to be successful on this trade. It's very unlikely that Tesla is gonna be right between 1185 and 1190 on the 19th of November. And in that case, I'm even being bearish on Tesla. I need it to fall from its current price. It's currently 1229, I needed to come down to between 11.85 and 11.90 to make money on this trade. 
Now, the reason I find putting on this trade in Weeble a little bit annoying is because I can't just manually pick the legs right here. In most other platforms, I could simply come down here and pick this leg and switch it to the 1160 puts or switch my calls up here from the 1190s to the 1250s. But in this case, I've got to come over here to the graph just like we did before. And since I do want to keep the width at five points wide, we're going to come up here and leave it at $5 wide. But the annoying part is going to be moving these to where I want them. And what's really frustrating about this is the fact that this doesn't really make any sense. With an iron condor, I'm typically going to go out here on the put side to pretty far out of the money. And then I'm going to go pretty far out here on the call side, pretty far out of the money. But I still might want the wings to be only five points off the call side. So let's say I wanted to do the 1255 calls by the 1260 calls. And on the put side, I wanted to sell the 1180s by the 1175s. Now that means the, the spread between the 1180s and the 1250s, I mean, that'd be like 30 points wide, but the spread between the two wings is still only gonna be five points wide. There is not an easy way to do it in here. And that's why I'm really not a fan of putting on iron condors inside a Weeble, but this is technically how you would do it. Now, the last one we're gonna go over is how to create a butterfly spread within Weeble. So we're gonna go ahead and delete this out of here, delete all. And just like before, we're gonna use Tesla as an example, and we're gonna put on a butterfly. Now remember, a butterfly is composed of selling two options, while buying wings on either side of those two options. And you can really think of butterflies a lot like a lottery ticket because we're trying to plan on the stock being at an exact price on an exact day at an exact time, which is pretty unlikely to happen. So let's say we thought Tesla was gonna be at 1180 on the 19th of November. We're gonna be selling that one and we're actually gonna be selling two of them. But for right now, we're just gonna click on the bid and have one single strike down here. Now, what we're gonna do is go ahead and click on single option here in the strategy box. We're gonna go ahead and find butterfly in the little strategy section right here. Now from here, you can see exactly what we're doing. And this is not exactly right. We need to change this from sell to buy. And there we go. We can see we are now selling 20 contracts on the 1185 put while buying the wings five points out of the money. We're buying the 1180s and we're buying the 1190s. Five points above, five points below. Now, just like always, let's simplify things a little bit. We'll just put one in here. So we're just gonna buy one of these. And Tesla might have been a bad example. You can see here currently there is a credit price, which is not really going to happen. You're not getting a credit for putting on this trade. So let's switch to something that might be a little bit better for this example. Let's go to Apple. We'll go ahead and delete this out of here and start over. Let's come up here to the 143 puts. We'll go ahead and click on the bid here. We'll come down to single option just like before, and we'll go to butterfly. Now, since I keep clicking on the bid, we need to switch this from sell to buy. And we'll throw in one contract here again. And you can now see what I'm doing is I'm selling two of the 144 strikes while simultaneously buying a 143 and buying a 145. And I'm doing all of that for a total debit of three cents. So I'm paying $3 for this trade. Now, if I'm right and I'm exactly right, Apple is exactly 144 on the 19th of November, right when the market closes, I could hypothetically make 97 cents or $97 on this trade. A trade that I only risk $3 for. Now, generally, if you're actually putting on a butterfly, you're not actually planning on it being exactly at 144 on expiration. You're just trying to get it as close as possible. Technically, if you were even slightly close, let's say you were at 143.20, this spread would still be trading for 20 cents. You would still make 20 bucks on this trade minus the three cents. So really you'd make $17, but you do want it to get as close to 144 as possible for this trade to be successful. Now, in my example, let's not make it just one single point wide. Let's come down here to the graph and make it, let's say five points wide. We'll come back here to the table. And now you can see where it switched my strike prices in order to get those $5 wide. We're saying we want it to be at exactly 150 on the 19th of November. You can see now that I'm trading it for $1.74. So I'm risking 174 bucks on this trade. However, if we're right and Apple is exactly $150 a share on the 19th of November, right when the market closes, this trade could make a total profit of 326 bucks. But that's how you create a butterfly spread. Again, it's not the easiest thing to do in Weeble, but this is far better than doing a iron condor or the vertical spread. This probably would make the most sense to do it in here. But you can see if we come back here to strategy, these are all of the strategies that you can build inside of Weeble. Other platforms will allow you to create custom spreads yourself like Jade Lizards or Zebras or whatever it is you're trying to create. This one, you are limited to this list right here. Now that about wraps things up for today's video. Hopefully that answers all of your questions about how to trade spreads on Weeble. If I did miss anything or you guys have any follow-up questions for me, leave them down below in the comments. If you did like this video, check out my Weeble tutorial playlist to check out some of the other videos. Also, don't forget to hit the like button on your way out and I'll catch you all in the next video.